Oh, it's burning. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Bushcraft North of 60. Today we're going to be talking firecraft and mainly ferrocerium rod and birch bark. So, what's the first thing you're going to need for that? Probably some birch bark. So, just kind of scope these guys out while I was driving up with the Jeep. But there's different types of birches for one thing, but there's different types of bark on birches too, depending on the age of the tree. So and where it's grown and things like that. I like going for this papery stuff. It's already coming off the tree from the wind whipping at it. And I would say it aptly named paper birches because it is just like paper. So this stuff, you'll find it takes a light real good, but it's not really oily, but look at this. That's, I mean, the only paper you're gonna find out in the bush that fine is gonna be in like a wasp nest, so. Yeah, I try not to damage the tree taking it either because you don't really need to for one thing and secondly there's enough of us into this as a hobby and a pastime that uh, if everybody stripped everything off every tree then it wouldn't take long for things to get bad looking so how I'm going to do i got a little bit here I'm definitely going to collect some more once the camera's off but I'm just going to take this and tuck it into this pocket in my shirt and normally when I'm hiking or doing anything out in the bush, that's where it'll be and it stays warm and dry and goes from there. So, I'm going to collect a bit more of this stuff and hopefully get a few different types so you can see the difference and we'll take it from there. See you guys soon. Well guys, old Molly here is going to be our workbench for today I guess. I've got a piece of board here and I'm going to show you... Probably the three more common types of birch bark that I'm going to find up here as far as the types. I'll show you. So you guys saw me harvesting the, uh, the real papery, wispy, thin stuff. The opposite end of that spectrum is going to be the stuff that's like a, like a hard sheet, almost like what you would think, like a canoe or maybe some containers and things like that would be made out of. That's one type. A few pieces of that. Then the real papery stuff that we got there just a little while ago is going to be this stuff right here. I'm going to hide that up this way just in case it gets a bit windy. And then you got this in-between stuff. I just called that good, didn't I? She's getting windy. Yeah, so you got your in-between stuff, which is not as thin as the papery stuff, but it's not quite as thick as the sheets. Try not to lose too much of that. And a lot of times you'll see it, it's all curled up and it's in layers. So that one's a little bit different story. So we've got those geared up. Next thing is going to be your ferro rod. So stay tuned. Can you hear me now? So it sounds like we're coming at you live from some snow machine races. Anyways, ferro rods. I'll show you what I started out with. Recently, I mean, I've had them over the years. Uh, this is one of those light my fire jobbies. I think you guys might have seen the video uh, Epic Fail twice. That's where this one actually fell apart on me and the rod came over the handle. That I wasn't too tickled about. It's kind of too bad because it's got a really nice striker. I didn't even put an edge on this one and it peeled the material off pretty good. And then I just recently acquired this bad boy. And it looks like I was sweating on it here too. 
gotta watch the corrode on you in salty uh, conditions. So this, once you get the sweat off, that'll really chuck some stuff. That's cool. And then there's other ones you'll see, like those uh, magnesium blocks with a little tiny strip of ferrocerium on the back. Yeah, I guess they're okay to have in something. I never really enjoyed using them every day. And I've got a paracord bracelet that has a small one inside with a tiny little striker. You're going to need really good tinder and ignition sources for stuff like that. But anyways, I digress. Quick word on your knife, too. Now, this never used to have a good sharp spine on it. I've uh, ground this one down. The knife before this, I had an old Frost Mora. I forget the model, but same thing just with a file. Something you'll find, if your knife doesn't have a sharp spine on it, you'll pretty much always, if you see where the bevel of your blade comes down, so it'll start right here at the, the cutting edge and then come up to the actual side of the blade, it's going to be ground down to the tip, so well, this stuff doesn't blow away. You're going to find that you can probably, in a pinch, pull off some material there with the tip of your knife, which isn't going to be the safest way to hold it. You can always put something over your hand, but usually if you're holding something sideways in a good pinch, Make a liar out of me now, huh? There we go, yeah. So you can get just that little tiny, tiny bit. Just watch you don't dull your point or stab yourself, so proceed at your own risk. So, birch bark. Let's say you've got this big lovely slab. You know what I've seen? Guys doing two things, and girls, people. So they'll sit here and they'll just go at this for days and days and days. And guess how long it's gonna take for that to catch? Might not ever, honestly. Backside, same story. Although these big rods can sometimes have some sparks going for a while. So you might get frustrated, be here all day doing this sort of thing. Another thing to keep in mind too, you see a lot of people doing this, and then you're banging into your tinder and blah blah blah. Oh man, I've been watching Lars too much with the blah blah blah. Anyways, try holding your knife and pull your rod back from the knife. Usually works good. Another one, eh, I guess that's got enough mud on it, I'll try not to press hard. You can even hold your rod in one spot. Or your knife, I should say, pull the rod across it. Anyways, I digress, that's not what this particular part's about, it's about preparation. So you see this, you've got a knife, you might as well use it. Try to do this the way you guys can see it here. If you take the sharp edge of your knife, if it's windy like it kind of wants to be here, you're going to want to shelter this. And if your birch bark's kind of curled up and wants to fling back, you're also going to want to prevent that because as soon as this flicks, it's almost like if you took a cookie sheet with uh, some little bit of rice or something on it and gave it a little pop and made the snap noise, she's all going to go flying. So you're going to want to scrape this up to get all that loose silvery stuff off into a little pile. I'm going to take my time doing this too. There's a chance I might even be too lazy to edit all that out. So you got a little pile of this stuff. Give your knife a quick little wipe just to make sure it's going to work good. And like I said, you could still even lay your knife here, see where the sparks are going to land. Go from there. Yep, so we have ignition. Try this other pile next to it. Yep, that one caught pretty quick too. So that being said though, it's going to be fun trying to catch your fire just off of that. Keep a small piece handy. And then throw that into your tinder. So like your twigs and stuff, all your your little small things. That's I guess that's plan A or step A I should say. You've got like your, your tinder, which would be this. And then your smaller twigs and stuff off the tree. You guys have seen me do this, all the little branch tips and then work your way up into fuel which would be like pencil or finger size and bigger. So that's the sheet stuff. Now everybody's favorite, or at least my favorite, I don't know, the papery stuff. Look at this stuff. This stuff is so... don't mind that elastic, that's from my skis. So what are you going to do with this? Here's a good one too. If your hands are cold, why waste two actions when you can do them both in the one? Warm your hands up, get your tinder all ready to go at the same time. I'm going to put it in this just in case it decides to blow away on me here because we have a little bit of a crosswind. So look at that. 
This won't have as many oils in it necessarily, it seems like, as the other stuff. But what it does have is a lot of really fine edges to catch your sparks. So this one, I'm not even going to get close to it. That's all it takes. I'm going to put that out too, I think. So that's that stuff. Which leaves our last one. Which is this twisted up, nasty looking, curled in on itself stuff. So we're going to, for a moment, assume we don't have other sources of birch bark, which probably isn't actually the case. So same thing, I'm going to crush this up a bit. And work it, show it some love. If you can, you've got a knife anyways. For those of you that grow up watching the urban peasant, try not to cut your fingers up like he did. You don't need to mince it super fine, but just give it some edges for those sparks to land in. So, once again, holding the knife and drawing the rod away from it. And I try to move my knife around. If you keep hitting the same spot, you're going to get these little speed bumps on it. So I try, not that this one's got many miles on it, but just keep things moving. And you'll play around with the angles too here, but see if we can... Yep, that side caught. I find this crumbly stuff doesn't work quite as good as the other two set up either way. And tonight it's making me look like I actually don't even know how to do it. Oh. And I would say you can go back, try... Maybe chopping up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. It just has to fall in somewhere where it's protected. So that's birch bark. That's just step one of a multi-step process. You still have to build your, your fire lay properly and everything, but I've seen so many people struggle with that. And this is actually going out to my friend Jonathan who asked me this today. So if you're watching this, Jonathan, thanks for giving me some inspiration to make a video that maybe some people take for granted. But uh, yeah, you just need to do a little bit of prep sometimes. But up here in the northern boreal forest, you'll find birch bark in abundance. And then the next best thing after that, once you've got that lit, is your uh, your spruce. At least what I've found up here, black spruce. So. Dead standing black spruce. Although up here, a lot of it is so dry, even laying on the ground after, after the snow has been gone for a few weeks. Everything's tinder dry, which is why we have a crazy fire season. So, hope you guys like that. Hopefully you learn something from it, or at least you get some entertainment value out of seeing my ugly mug up here. But uh, if you do like it, be sure to, let's see, there's an order for this. Subscribe. Well, like it first, because everyone wants a thumbs up. Like, subscribe, share. Um, there's the bell thing, so you can stay notified anytime I get some time to put something new up here. And just want to make a little announcement, too. I'm also on Facebook now. I say me. Barbara and I are both on Facebook under Bushcraft North of 60. You can find us at capital B N little o and then the number six zero so bno60 on facebook so check us out there stay up to date sometimes i drop little teasers and hints and things like that but yeah anyways it's time for me to get this thing slinging back through the mud on the way home and hopefully we'll see you guys soon here on the next episode of bushcraft north of 60 coming at you not exactly live but edited from the northwest territories in canada thanks for watching guys we'll see you later